こんばんはディル・アングレイです<笑>えっとドラムの深夜ですえー、ベースのモハメド・ヤリですモハメドヤリ During Grey is one of the most well known and beloved Japanese bands to ever make waves in the music industry. From their early days as a VK band to their experimental and progressive phase, all the way to their modern era as a legacy band, still putting out amazing and forward thinking music. Though you might just know them for that one infamous music video. Before ever donning the name they would become so infamous for, the band had a slightly different sound under a very different name, unknowingly setting the stage for the brilliance and success that would come just a few years after beginning. And after donning the name and putting out their debut record, the world of metal was never the same again. Duran Gray is one of those bands that only really comes once in a lifetime, and Well, they're my favorite. So let's talk about the birth of Duran g r a n Before there was Diru, there was La Sadies. When the band first came to be, they were made up of most of the members that would later come to form Duran Grey, with Kyo, Shinya, Karu, and Dai all showing their pretty little faces during La Sadies' short lived run. The project began after Kyo had spent a few years as a roadie with the bands Karayume and Albatross, though this is far from the beginnings of Kyo's dreams of becoming a stadium touring frontman. That came during his high school years when he was inspired by the amazing yet underrated Buck Tick. One of the funniest bits of lore here is that when Kyo was a kid, he pestered his parents to get him ex Japan guitarist Ide's signature model. It was only after he made attempts to learn both guitar and bass that he switched to vocals, because instruments were just way harder to master. And considering how crazy Kyo's vocal range actually is. <laughs> And the sheer amount of different vocal techniques he's developed over the years. The prospect of him being discouraged by difficulty is kind of hilarious. It was after his time as a roadie that the vocalist would start to pursue his own career in music, having a few short lived stints in other visual K bands, performing covers of Lunacy and Dura Longer songs. After this, the band would reevaluate themselves and don a new name with a more serious image and tone, going as l a s a d e s Quickly taking to stages in hopes of becoming the next visual K act to break the mold. The band would complete their lineup after losing a couple members and bringing guitarists Dai and Karu into the fold. And it's here where the first real lineup of the band would take things seriously and write some demos, releasing their first one, Kaku to Genjitsu, in a limited run of 300 copies. <laughs> Okay, I know that sounds pretty bad, but it's a demo tape from 1995. What do you expect? Despite the production sounding like your average hipster black metal project, the guitar playing, groovy bass lines, and haunting vocals were a step above what many others were doing at the time, and showed just how early the band had developed some of the key elements. That would lead to their success years down the road. As well as their forward thinking sound, the band also donned flamboyant and colorful stage attire, reminiscent of what we could see from the band Malice Miser. 
Whether that band actually inspired Lesades, or that was just the in thing to do at the time, I'm not completely sure. But regardless, from this point, the story of Lesades is just the tale of most local bands, playing shows, developing a more refined sound, and building an audience. And to their credit, the group's material would definitely see improvements over the years. <laughs> A song like this, more than anything, shows a lot of promise that the group carried, and after one last lineup change in 1997, Lesades came to their end, only to be reborn under a new name. <laughs> In February of 1997, Lesades would undergo one final lineup change, this time bringing in bassist Toshia. And with the newly completed lineup, the band would morph, rebranding themselves under the name During Grey and bringing an even larger metal influence to their sound. While some might hear the name offhand and think it's a twist on the character Dorian Gray, the name actually translates to Gray Silver Coin, being an amalgamation of English, French, and German. Originally when asked about the name, Kyo would explain that he knew the name before the band was formed and wanted the color gray to represent that the band was neither black nor white in its tone. Though in 2020, Guitarist Karu admitted that the name was taken from a famous Japanese band at the time called Loreen, who themselves had released a song titled During Grey in 1995. <laughs> After rebranding, the band would refine some of their previous material as well as write some new tracks before heading to the studio and putting together what would become their first official releases during Grey, the EP Misa. While upon release the EP was rather ignored, a few months on the market and it would see a large surge in popularity, and a well deserved one at that. Misa isn't just remembered for being the band's first release, but for being a masterclass of 90s visual K. The EP is a six song affair that dabbles in quite a few different genres, from metal to punk, alternative rock, and even some Pantera-esque groove metal. Misa has something for everyone. Even from track one off the record, the band showed off a sound that would become iconic. This might sound a bit primitive, but it really set the building blocks for the sound During Grey would tackle in their later work, with dynamic songwriting and Kyo's unique style of singing. And that's kind of the theme of this record overall, it is the building blocks of what the band would later take and evolve into the iconic and influential sound that we know today. The two tracks I think really steal the show, however, are A Road and Byo Shin. A Road is a track that revels in the 90s Visual K sound, taking some obvious cues from the likes of Malice Miser. The energy on this track is just infectious and the punk sound of his drums contrast very well with the clean guitars. Also, this solo. It might not be anything groundbreaking, but it's tasteful and elevates the song to another level. Now, the EP's closing track, Bio Shin, is a song that shows off a sound we wouldn't hear the band explore again until their third record, Kiso. <laughs> Yeah. 
Getting to hear Kyo scream like this to chuggy and downtuned guitars this early into the band's discography is almost uncanny. Given the band wouldn't tread this more new metal style sound until years later. But like most of Misa, it feels like a prototype of what Duran Gray would flesh out and evolve into over time. And as I said, the EP would begin to take off in 1998. And with its success, Duran Gray began to play bigger and bigger shows, cultivating a dedicated and energized following, eager to see what else the band had in store. And it was this newfound following and assigning to Japanese label East West Records that would pave the path for the band to go down in order to craft what many still consider to be the crown jewel of their discography. <laughs> Quickly rising among the ranks of Japanese radio, Duran Gray would spend a few months writing and recording their debut record in a plethora of different studios across Japan. Gauze was the band's first project to have a real budget behind it, and not to waste an opportunity, the band would hone in on all the skills they had acquired over the years, putting together one of the greatest debuts any band has ever released. 1999's Gauze was a massive record, and while the band themselves put a lot of work into it, the enlisted help of ex-Japan's Yoshiki Hayashi arranging and producing a handful of tracks definitely helped. I'd actually go as far as to say that Gauze wouldn't have been the album it was if not for Yoshiki's help. On one hand, his years of experience writing and producing for his own band allotted him an expertise the members of Duran Gray hadn't had the chance to develop yet. But on the other hand, multiple members, Kyo in particular, were huge fans of X Japan, hence the previously mentioned story of him begging his parents for their signature guitar. So with Yoshiki's star power in the room, I'm sure it lit a fire under the band's ass to produce the best material they had written up to that point. And to their credit, it paid off. Gauze is a layered and varied record, taking everything the band was doing before and amping it to its logical extreme. The record starts off with an energetic intro. Beginning with a more atmospheric feel, it ramps up until we hear Toshia's fantastic bass playing, complemented by an electronic beat, gearing us up for the album's first real track, Shuin no Isu. <laughs> This song is the perfect starting track. Not only is it a great song, but it shows off the band's more unorthodox approach to guitar riffs and Kyo's iconic screams. While it might not be at the level they are now, even in the early days, Kyo's vocal chops were nothing to scoff at. And something else that keeps this song from just devolving into a generic metal affair is its very punk-influenced energy going as far as including some gang vocals. Though with the album's next track, we're given a bit of whiplash. Yurameki is a song that still contains the fantastic guitar work, brings in some more ballad-esque elements more reminiscent of other visual K bands at the time. <laughs> Again, the guitars and vocals steal the show, and with the dynamic structure of the rest of the song, it all comes together to make something that, even to this day, stands a cut above the rest. It's further down the track listing where we find a fan favorite track, Cage. To say Cage is a great song is, well, it's an understatement. This song is just so fucking good, it's ridiculous. I'm not even sure what to say besides listen to it. The song was so beloved that even Ryu, formerly of the band did a fantastic recreation of the song. 
Now, to talk a bit about the kind of lyrics that can be found on the album, they're unrelentingly personal and cutting, with topics including war, childhood trauma, abuse, and even abortion. The track Cage itself is host to lyrics regarding parental abuse and neglect. Even if the clock is turned counterclockwise, the crime that was committed cannot be changed. First and last, understander broke. Was it too kind to me? Reflecting on old trauma, I'm a sad smashed up to the last of you. While trying to translate the lyrics into English might take a little bit of the context away, the gist is still there. And speaking of cutting lyrics, one of the most brutal and to the point songs on the record is Mazahist of Decadence, a nine minute monster of a track that has seen its fair share of controversy due to its staunch anti-abortion lyrics. Yet I could do nothing that court of ours will be. I, incomplete. My body pierced through with hooked pain. Mother's screaming voice ringing in my ears. Will not cease white-coated adults scooped me up. In eyes overflowing with cold-heartedness, bloody, without a right hand, I am reflected, just as I was in black vinyl. I am wrapped, engulfed, while my consciousness is gradually fading, I consider quietly. And if you were even wondering if this might just be a euphemism for something else, just have a look at the music video. It leaves absolutely nothing up to the imagination, and really just shows how far the band was willing to go to evoke emotion and push boundaries. Now, to take a step away from the controversial, I want to talk about the timeless classic that is Yogan. <laughs> Some time ago, I had noticed you, but to be only by your side is all I need. I held you close at the end. I don't know if this will become the end. Yokan is a bittersweet love song, and its music and lyrics are absolutely timeless. While this song has gone on to be one of the band's most well-known, and albeit a bit overplayed, I still find myself entranced every time it comes on. Now, before I let myself just play every single song and spoil the record more than I already have, I'll just say the album's ending portion is fantastic. And up until its final breaths, it still goes out of its way to impress you. Both the tracks, Mask and Zan, show this off in spades. Mask brings back the earlier tracks more intricate and stylish guitar playing, and Kyo's more eccentric vocal style. This was actually one of the first tracks I had ever heard from the band, and at the time I'd never heard anything quite like this. While it's not as much of a fan favorite as other songs off of Gauze, it's definitely one of mine. And speaking of underloved songs, Zan is probably one of the most mistreated tracks in Duran Gray's discography. Not because it isn't a beloved song, but because it was a song that the band re-recorded and absolutely ruined. Zan is one of the heaviest tracks off the record, with its fast and thrashy riffs, blast beats, and Kyo's blood-curdling screams. When it comes to deep cuts, this is one of Duran Gray's finest, and it stands as a beast of a track, though in later years it would be reworked to be heavier and in turn, it would lose a lot of the dynamics as well as the energetic tone that made it a classic to begin with. 
Gauze would prove to be a massive success, and the band would go on to perform a few arena shows and tour in support of it. And without restating the obvious, Gauze is such a great record that to this day it remains some of the members' favorite in terms of songwriting. Needless to say, Duran Gray has gone on to become one of the most legendary and influential bands of all time. You would be hard pressed to find a Visual K band today that doesn't take from them. After Gauze, the band would go on to evolve their sound and image more and more before a tragic event that would cause Kyo to lose hearing in one of his ears, indirectly turning the tides for the band to enter a more dissident and experimental territory. Over the years, the band has continued to put out fantastic material, and Kyo himself has had his fair share of interesting side projects. To say Duran Gray means a lot to me is an understatement, and given my constant praise for them throughout this video, I'm sure that's obvious. I plan to cover more of their albums and dive deeper into the band's career in the future, but until then, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, support me on Patreon, I'll see you in the next video. It's me, Madison Ray. Play up your pathetic little babe pitties.